My name is Ed, and today we're going to be finalising our Space Marine Tech videos with the Space Marines equipment. Yay! I can hear you cheering from in here, inside your computer. Moving on. We're going to start today by talking about Space Marine scanners. Now, they're also known as auspexes, and they are short-range devices used to detect motion, invisible gases, and energy emissions throughout a wide spectrum, such as heat, radiation, and most forms of energy given off by vehicles and living troops. Their main tactical use is to reveal otherwise hidden troops and allow them to be fired on. The standard range of a scanner or auspex is 50 meters, although walls more than 50 meters thick, as well as certain shielding materials, are able to block them. Scanners can take the form of separate handheld devices, or may be built into a helmet such as the case with Space Marine Terminator armor. Next up, I want to talk about the Narthechium. It's a Space Marine Apothecary's medical field kit containing the necessary tools to treat wounded Space Marines and get them back into the action as quickly as possible. Included in standard kits are anti venoms, stim packs, healing agents, sterile clay for sterilizing wounds, which sounds delicious, eh? A reductor, which is a tool for exercising progenoid organs, which is gene seed organs from fallen Space Marines, and a carnifex for euthanizing fatally injured Space Marines. It is shaped like a pistol, the barrel of which is applied to the wounded Space Marine's temple. When it is triggered, it sends a metal piston hurtling through the skull into the Space Marine's brain, killing them instantly and virtually painlessly. Next up, I want to talk about the Space Marine Jump Pack. Now, it is a device mounted to the back of a Space Marine's power armour, and it contains turbines and jets powerful enough to lift even a Space Marine in power armour. They greatly enhance a warrior's mobility, allowing him to travel quickly across the battlefield, making great bounding leaps over obstructions and launching himself into melee or close combat. Its roaring engines allow for the user to slow down his descent while leaping from a low-flying aircraft or even deep strike behind enemy lines. And I want to talk about teleport homers. Now, these are antique pieces of equipment used by the Space Marines. They produce a signal which can be locked onto by Terminator armor and other teleportation systems, which enable Space Marines to teleport onto the battlefield with much greater accuracy. Next up, I want to talk about the Locator Beacon. Now, these are portable signal devices which actually include teleport homers in their makeup. They also have broad-spectrum communications and geopositional tracking. They are frequently carried by Space Marine bike squads and are placed behind enemy lines in order for Space Marines to make covert strikes into the enemy's positions and enable them to disable enemies quickly and cleanly. Now, I want to talk about Space Marine Purity Seals. Now, purity seals take the form of prayers or litanies inscribed onto pieces of paper or Valium, and are then affixed to a Space Marine's armour, commonly with red or black wax, which are then coated with protective sealants, or more permanent electrum casings. A purity seal can be affixed to any part of a Space Marine's armour or weapon. A common place would include the leg plates and rims, or the tops of the shoulder plaids. Purity seals are also not to be confused with prayer sheets and paper linities worn by the Black Templars, which are slightly different things. Now, it's a mark of a Space Marine's pure faith or morality in the eyes of the Emperor and the Chapter. Such seals are only ever rewarded by the Chapter's chaplains and are bestowed on Space Marine before battle. This can be because they are about to undertake a special task or mission or because they are not expected to survive. Unlike other honours, the right to bear a purity seal comes only after a Space Marine has worn it in battle and proven his courage to live up to its ideals. Each purity seal carries with it a different invocation of blessing as devised by the chaplain, depending on the Space Marine's assignment. The exact nature of the blessing depends on the chaplain and is chosen when the blessing is bestowed. A battle brother can also draw strength from his purity seal by reciting its prayer and reaffirming his sense of duty to his chapter and to the Emperor. It also allows them to resist some of the strong warping natures of chaos as their faith is able to be channeled through the purity seals. Next up, I want to move on to a piece of equipment used exclusively by Space Marine Librarians, and this is known as the Psychic Hood, and is used to protect Space Marine Librarians from enemy psychic powers. It often is distinguished as a metal hood rising from the back plate of the power armour. It uses a set of interwoven, intricately aligned crystals to nullify an opponent's psychic attacks. However, they offer very arcane design and are likely to have not been produced perfectly and so are not 100% effective. Next up I want to move on to the Rosarius, which is exclusively used by Space Marine chaplains on the battlefield with the Space Marines. Now the Rosarius is an amulet which incorporates a powerful force field generator. It is a rare and highly prized piece of technology and is also an icon of the Imperial Creed and entrusted only to the highest officials of the Ecclesiarchy and Space Marine chaplains. A Rosarius takes the form of an amulet, often displaying the Aquila or a square stylized cross of adamantine or other durable metals, with the jeweled Ecclesiarchy symbol in the centre. It is worn around the neck or waist on a sash, a cord, or a string of prayer beads. It contains a tiny conversion field generator which emits a protective energy field around the wearer. The field's effect is to convert the energy of an impact into light. When the field stops a shot, a blinding flash of light is produced. The field is capable of rendering even plasma gunshots harmless. 
Now, the, because of this power, the Rosarius is often referred to as the Soul's Armour. Now I'm going to move on to a piece of equipment used exclusively by Space Marine Tech Marines, and that is a Servo Arm. It is used to help repair damaged vehicles on the battlefield, and can also be used to devastating effect in close combat. When a servo harness or servo arm is worn, it overrides the tech marine's power armour control to maintain the balance while handling massive weights such as the weight of a rhino. The servo arm is to all extents and purposes a large mechadendrite, which is of course a robotic aperture used by servitors in order to move and haul very large and heavy objects. Now I want to move on to the Signum. Now this is a relatively unknown device, and it's actually a communications device used to communicate with command vehicles away from the battlefield in order to access a myriad of targeting information that supplies the user and any squadron that they are attached to with special targeting and positional data. And as you can tell, they're usually used in the context of vehicles. Now let's talk about the Crux Terminatus. Now literally this means the Terminator Cross, and it's a stone medallion awarded to highly skilled and experienced Space Marine veterans. All members of a chapter trained to use the Space Marine Terminator armour will have first been awarded the Crux Terminatus. These badges, set into the left shoulder plate of the Terminator armour, are highly distinctive and usually fashioned from stone and are said to contain a fragment of the Emperor's own power armour. Acts of extreme valour among the wearers may be rewarded by the replacement of the standard badge by the Crux Argentum, a Terminator badge made from silver and encrusted with gems. Sergeants, captains and librarians have different versions to identify their status. Those who are awarded with the Crux Terminatus often wear smaller versions when they are fighting in power armour. This honour appears most commonly as a skull set into a cuneiform shape of red or bone. Terminator sergeants often add crossed bones behind the skull, whilst lightning bolts behind the skull are often added to terminators trained as assault units. The Crocs Terminatus is almost always worn on a left shoulder pad, although it may be worn on one of the knee pads, although this is of course usually incorporating the shoulder. Now I've talked about these items, I'm going to finalise this video with a few more of the unique relics that Space Marines can use. Now one of the more common ones is an adamantine mantle. Now these are cloaks made of threads of adamantine and are tough and resistant, and can provide excellent protection for its wearer. The cloak protects them from high strength attacks, allowing them to survive very heavy firepower, such as shots from assault cannons or even blasts from plasma weaponry, although that usually is quite a risk, even if you try to get in the front of a plasma bolt. And lastly, I want to talk about the Iron Halo, which is another unique piece of Space Marine equipment. Now these are ancient artefacts, uh, especially given to Space Marines who have shown exceptional initiative or bravery on the battlefield, more so than that of the Crux Terminatus. It incorporates a powerful conversion field similar to that of a Rosarius that reinforces the resilience of power armour, allowing them to weather even the most fierce attacks. The Iron Halo appears to be a spiked circle or half circle of grey iron, worn either on the helmet or the left shoulder pad. Sometimes it is even more elaborate and takes the form of an actual halo arcing over the Battle Brothers helmet. Okay, so that is everything I wanted to mention in relation to Space Marine equipment. And that brings us to the end of the Space Marine Armoury videos. So what's going to happen now is that we're going to start putting out some other videos relating to the Space Marines, and we're going to start phasing in some other Imperial armies, and actually some non-Imperial armies, in order to bring a little more variety to the Vaults of Terror channel. So I'm also announcing a bit of a change to the video format. What's going to happen is we're going to start bringing out more videos, but they're going to be shorter in order to allow you to actually absorb the information we're projecting, as opposed to giving you huge chunks of videos that take forever to edit and forever to listen to. So hopefully they'll be a little more enjoyable, and they should be coming up soon. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any more suggestions or anything you'd like to hear about, let us know, and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thank you for watching The Vaults of Terror.